In this tutorial, we'll look at using the Smith chart to design a model for a dipole antenna. One might ask, why would I want such a model? Well, we might want an electrical model so that we can simulate an amplifier circuit and verify its stability before we actually build it. Or, we might want a real dummy load, which has the reactance of an antenna rather than a simple resistor typically used. Well, let's get started. As with previous tutorials, we'll start by loading the model for our 80 meter dipole antenna. And we'll sweep just to make sure it's the right thing. Let's set our drive frequency to be in range. And I picked a value so that the reactance was very close to zero. Basically, our antenna is resonant at 3.77 megahertz. My goal is to design a circuit using capacitors, resistors, inductors, and transmission lines, which has the same impedance as this dipole. As I do the design, I would really like to keep this trace so that I can see when I'm getting close. But I don't want this load to affect my circuit. In other words, I would like to cut the design right along this line, leaving this visible and putting a load in as seen from the right. I could do this by inserting two resistors one of a large value to do the cut, and one of a smaller value to provide to the load. And this would work perfectly fine. However, I'm going to use this opportunity to introduce a feature of SimSmith called the F block. I can add an F block just as I can any other circuit element. Notice that the equation has a default value of i. This requires a little explanation. Smith charts are concerned primarily with impedances. Generally, we start with a known impedance on the load and compute new impedances as we add the components. Thus, the Smith chart impedances are generally computed by analyzing the circuit moving from the load to the generator. In this example, we're going to do something very odd. We're going to write an equation for the F block which is independent of the impedance on the left. This is unusual, but of course this is not forbidden. What we want is an equation which specifies a purely resistive impedance. There are three different ways that we can do this with the F block. First, we can type just a number. A simple number is always taken to be a simple, pure, real impedance. The second way to make things a little more readable, we can write R followed by a number. The R is generally ignored in SimSmith, but in this case it makes it a little more readable. The third way is that sometimes we want to make adjustments to the values inside the equation just as we make adjustments to other values in circuit elements. To do this, we simply use a lowercase letter instead of a number. And we put the value here. Now, I'm going to assume that a reasonable value for A is 92 ohms. This means that at least at the resonant frequency, my model will match the desired value. A common model for a dipole antenna is simply a series RLC network. This model tends to work over a fairly narrow band, but let's see what we can do. I can make my LC. And we can see already that it's starting to show um, a frequency range which is not completely wrong, but is clearly not enough. We can adjust our values here to make this arc longer. And 
I'm going to just keep making it until this dot gets all the way over around here. Then we're going to go and adjust to the inductor until the X starts to get up towards the top. And as you can see, the dot has moved back this way. And we can go back and forth here. We'll go back and forth several times. And we're actually starting to get something fairly close here. And that's not a bad approximation. So let's go take a look at what's gone in the SWR. And we see, well, this is not too bad. It's a little off, um, but not much. We can actually change it here if we wanted to move the resonant frequency. But we're going to leave it back here pretty close to where we want it to be. We go back and look at the Smith chart. And we see that while the SWR looks pretty good, in reality the reactance is not quite right. If we wanted to make the reactance a little better, a little better match, we can actually remember rotate things inside the Smith chart using a delay line, or excuse me, using a transmission line. We put in our transmission line, and it's clearly rotated it too far, so we're going to reduce the length of the transmission line, and we can see this moving back up. We look back at our SWR. SWR is pretty darn close. Reactances are representative, if not exact. We can modify this if we'd like. Um, we can change the impedances of some things and move stuff around. But as we can see, it's, it's fairly representative. As we can see from the SWR chart, this simple circuit is a fairly good model for a dipole over a frequency range from uh, something like right here, basically 3.5, up to uh, somewhere in this range, um, which turns out to be about 4 megahertz. This would be considered narrow band, but it's good enough to cover the 80 meter amateur radio band. As it turns out, as a general guideline for this type of circuit, one would expect the reactances of the L and C components to be roughly 10 times the load impedance. We can see here the reactance is roughly 10, maybe 11 times as big, and it gets canceled out here. So the reactance of the C and the reactance of the L are roughly 10 times the real impedance of the antenna. This factor of 10 is related to the SWR bandwidth of the antenna in question. Just to demonstrate this, let's set the Smith chart impedances to be 92 ohms. And look back at the SWR and measure the 2 to 1 SWR bandwidth. It's roughly 3.6 to 3.9, roughly 300 kilohertz wide. This is about 1 12th or so of the central frequency of 3.5 or 3.6 megahertz, but it's not a bad approximation. This circuit is quite buildable and, once built, would provide a dummy load significantly more accurate than a simple resistor. In the next tutorial, we'll look at the F block in more detail and reveal a few idiosyncrasies of SimSmith.